Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining this talk. My name is Vasily Leoninka, and I'm working for Huawei, Advanced Software Technology Lab. I'm going to talk today about challenges of enabling going binary optimization by Bolt. First, I'd like to acknowledge a major contributor to this feature development, our team member, Ladislav Milevsky, who is co-author of this presentation. The presentation divided into seven parts shown on this slide. It is worth to introduce some basic Golang specifics to the audience. Golang is a statically typed and compiled programming language. It uses own compiler implementation written in Golang and doesn't use LLVM framework. There are projects like GCC Go and Go LLVM, but these compilers are not production ready, so they are out of scope of this talk. Golang compiler supports various target operating systems and platforms. The more important thing is that Golang uses own runtime library to implement language-specific functionality. By default, Golang toolchain builds project code, old, old packages, and uh, runtime li library into statically linked executable. Why we need both for Golang? Golang compiler still doesn't support profile-guided optimization which is known to be a very efficient performance optimization. And we would like to improve performance of our applications. As I mentioned on the previous slide, Golang builds project of dependencies and runtime to static executable. So it causes generation of huge binaries. And as a result, there are issues with the instruction cache locality. It is known that Bolt is an efficient tool for improvement of instruction cache utilization and reducing branch mispredictions. Bolt doesn't require rebuilding application with a specific compiler, so we have no limitations on toolchain selection and can keep using Golang compiler for building Golang projects. However, Bolt doesn't support Golang internal runtime structure sensitive to binary modifications. Here, I'll share more details about Golang runtime uh, metadata important for us based on uh, structures specific for Golang version 1.17. The main data structure of Golang executable called module data. It includes references to set of tables and describes layout of file. PC tab holds PC data entries for all function descriptors. PC LN table contains sorted array of pairs of function addresses and offset in FTAP table. FTAP table is an array of function descriptor structures with glued PC data and func data tables references. Function descriptor itself includes information like address, name, arguments, size. PC data and func data tables are additional tables used to implement runtime specific functionality like garbage collector and scheduler. Find func tab. Service table used to speed up search of function in FTAP table by PC value. Also, there is a set of pointers to regular file sections and PCSP table containing PC to SP table offsets. Type descriptors obviously describes type and types methods if they exist. It uses function offset from beginning of text section as a reference. On these slides, I used bold text to highlight fields in these structures that uses offsets, addresses, size of functions, which could be changed after bold will execute optimization passes. So these fields should be updated in the output file. Most of functionality required to enable Golang support was implemented in three additional Golang optimization phase passes executed in the following order. Golang pre-pass, Golang post-pass, and Golang pass. Don't be confused with the Golang passes names. Golang pre-processing stage should be executed right after the binary was disassembled and no changes applied. On this stage, we need to save all information which later will be required to be updated. This includes saving offset in FTAP in extra field of uh, binary function class, marking some functions considered to be dangerous to be modified as non-simple to avoid optimization, saving values of uh, PC data, func data tables, and PCSP using MC annotation, 
for related MC inst objects. Post-processing stage. Executed after all optimization passes are already applied to text and no other text changes are expected. This stage inserts dump call used by instrumentation to write profile data to file. Also fixes knobs padding for some special runtime functions. Fixes on save point and stack map index PC data tables. In some cases, it requires to insert knob instructions with a MC annotation for further handling. The final stage, it fixes data section and doesn't change text. On this stage, we need update or recreate all Golang metadata tables, type descriptors, PCLN table, FTAP, PC data, and func data. And finally, update pointers in first module data structure. Our current status of enabling Golang support in both is as follows. We enabled support of Golang compilers versions 1.14, 1.16, and 1.17. We enabled support of x86-64 and ARM64 binaries. We enabled support instrumentation of both platforms, x86-64 and ARM64. My colleague, Vladislav Milevsky, already contributed a set of minor changes to Bolt and published RFC with current implementation of uh, Golang support in Bolt. The patch is quite big and requires to be split into a series of commits for further review. Probably the most interesting part is performance impact. Did we reach desired performance improvement? And the answer is yes. Our internal Golang application's performance was improved up to 19%. Application of Bolt on GoWeb benchmark showed about uh, 8 and 11% percent of uh, performance improvement on Xeon and Kunpeng CPUs accordingly. For GraphQL benchmark, the improvement is about 11 and 9 percent accordingly. There is a set of limitations with the current implementation. Bolt requires existence of static revocations in input binary, but Golan compiler doesn't support emitting them. So we need to use external linkers. Golan compiler doesn't fully follow ARM64 ELF specification and not generates mapping symbols. So an additional commit is required to be applied to Golan compiler to fix it. And we provided this fix. Golan binaries are huge and Bolt uses a lot of memory to instrument or optimize them. Some Bolt optimizations are currently disabled to avoid overcomplicated logic for Golang passes and additional memory usage. We are planning to continue working on upstream Golang support in Bolt and related patches in Golang compiler. Also, we are going to add support of newer Golang compiler versions. And that's it. Thank you for your time and attention to our topic.